Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. So today's video, going to give you an update on my KD Lite. Going to let you know how it's doing. It's been about seven months now, so I'm going to give you an update as to how much it's producing a day. I'm going to go over a new update that they had regarding the firmware, this new low power mode. We're going to go over those specs, how much it'll make at that point. And also had a little tidbit of news on that KD Box 2. They did add one new feature to it. And for those of you interested, it is currently in stock. January 16th in the morning, they did a restock. For any of you guys following, I did do a community post as soon as it came out. But if you're unaware and looking for it, it is currently in stock on Gold Shell's site. Um, so if that sounds interesting, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get right to it. So I got my KD Lite back in June. For those of you who didn't see that initial review, so back in the day, so back when I got it, right, it was earning about 8 KDA a day, okay? But this is also prior to, like, the KD Max releasing, the IB Link Max, and then the KD6s weren't really in full swing yet, right? So pretty much ever since I got it, the rewards have been going down fairly consistently, right? You can see here it was at 8 initially, pretty good the first month, and then you could already see we're in the 7s, right? And this is only a few weeks later. <laughs> and it's literally been the story all the way down, so you can already see here, Another week later, already down in the sixes. So it's just gradually been going down, 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 down. It finally started chilling out around this time. So around September is when it finally started. It got into the fours, and now pretty much from September to now, it's been anywhere from like 4.2 to 4.7, okay? So the past four months, it's been fairly steady, and that's also because not much hardware has came out, right? There were a couple of things, though. Um, a couple of things that did happen in September. The main thing being was the announcement of that KA3, right? And that's one thing I did kind of harp on in that time was that when that guy does come out, it's going to be a huge hit to the hash rate and the difficulty, which like I've mentioned in the review since then about the KA3 regarding profitability and such is that for those of us who have been mining it, because I know a lot of people have been skeptical about, you know, the numbers that I was like coming up with. They're like, oh, there's no way it's going to get hit that hard. And that's what I was referencing, that for those of us who have been mining it, who have been mining, you know, for quite a few months, we know how hard the hash rate's going to get hit because we've already felt it just from these smaller releases. Okay, again, I was making 8 KDA a day down to 4 within the span of a few months. And this guy, the KA3 coming out, is way bigger jump than any of those guys that released. Okay. Again, we don't really know how hard it's going to get hit until we get actual numbers as far as how many get shipped. But considering how big of a hit that was from just that, this guy is going to be significantly more. Again, just to give you that example so you know where I'm coming from with those numbers. But, um, but we can see here we had this big jump in the hash rate. So again, the KA3 was announced. There were a few more. I'm sure more people were getting you know their initial orders of the maxes and stuff plugged in. As well as we know that Bitmain did release a couple of those KA3s to certain mining farms. It was like Hashfrog and like Kadena Mining Club. They offer like a cloud mining. So we know that they did have a partnership with them and some of them did get released to them. Doesn't seem like that many because it would have been a much harder hit. But this is probably also something to do with that initial jump. And we can see here for the most part, it's gone up a little bit, but it's been pretty steady. Right, and that's why those rewards have been pretty steady. Been a couple of dumps here, and it was from people. I think there was mining farms that went down for a couple of days. So that's what that was, and for the most part, it's been fairly steady, except for recently, we had this little leg up, and that's most likely from those new Ivy Links, because we know people have been getting them now. Right, we announced a few weeks ago that they started shipping, and we've I've seen a couple of reviews now, so I know people do have those in hand. So that's what this jump is, right? But overall, hasn't been too bad. It's been in that like four and a half range when it's in that full power mode, which overall isn't horrible, right? We'll see what happens next month when uh, the KA3 comes out. But for now, it's doing all right. So now let's talk about that update. So for those of you who do have a KD Lite or any gold shell in general, if you're interested in doing any firmware updates, it's on their website. Click on that support tab. Under the tutorial section, go to view more, and you're going to see a link to how to upgrade the firmware. And it's pretty in-depth. I'm not going to go over it too much. It is fairly easy. And it has the link for the GitHub, right? You click on the link for the GitHub, and then you search for yours, 
right? So mine is a KDA miner. I have the light, and right here is going to be the link to the most recent firmware, being this 2.29. Um, and that was the first firmware upgrade I've done because I had no reason prior to, right? Before, really didn't have any issues with it, but recently, as of a few weeks ago, started getting a higher hardware percentage error. Nothing too drastic. The, the yield was about where it should have been, but it was higher than usual. It had been averaging like 2 to 3%. And more recently, it was like 5 to 6%. So I tried rebooting it, did a couple of things, didn't really help. So I decided to finally upgrade the firmware. And once I did, I noticed that they added a low power mode now, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're going to go into that real quick. So once you've done that, you can see down here. So it's rated at 1,330 watts in full mode, right? So once I went into the low power mode, this was the result. It went down to 865 watts. So give or take, it's been running about a week with this new power mode on. And it's hovered from like 863 to 870. So we'll go with that number. So 870 watts from 1330 is a pretty big jump, right? 500 watts is a pretty good amount. So now let's look at what the yield differences have been. Okay, so again, we know the wattage now. Let's look at the average terahash. So this is for nine days worth right and it's been averaging about 12.3 which isn't bad so now we have some some numbers okay and we'll do those calculations here in a second um, one other thing to know is that in this low power mode it is also running way better okay mine has always kind of been an underperformer even in the full hash rate mode it was give or take about 15.8 15.9 was more of my average and again that's going to vary right certain peoples are right on the money Others are overperformers. I've seen some as high as like 17, right? Fortunately, mine was on the lower end, but it is within that, that normal parameter. It's usually like a 5% window up and down, right? So this one, one big difference I did notice when it's in this mode is the hardware, per, hardware error percentage went down drastically, okay? Even when I did the firmware upgrade and was in that normal mode, it was still give or take. It's been averaging from like 2 to 3%, which isn't like super abnormal, but I noticed that in this mode, it runs way better. And it's not just because of the heat. Like, for example, right now, it's been cool. We've actually been in the 30s the past couple of nights here, so it's been super cool. So it's not because of that. It's just mine, for whatever reason, does like this mode a lot better. Okay, everybody's results will be slightly different. But this has been the average now. is isn't just like one, but this is one average for the whole week. So this is, should be some pretty accurate numbers. Um, so now let's compare, right? So now that we have... The terahash and the wattage, because nothing ever officially came out. I was looking through their tweets, and they did actually tweet something about it, but they never gave any specs for it, right? So now let's break it down. Let's compare it to the full rate mode. Okay, so if we go into a calculator. So now that we know, well, let's do the previous, right? So we have something to compare it to, which was 1330, 1330 watts. So we're going to divide it by... Normally, it'd be 16.2, but like I said, mine has always been between 15.8, 15.9 has been the average, regardless of that. So that's what I'm going to do my calculation by, okay? So the watts to terahash ratio, it's been about 83.6 watts to terahash, right? So now we have something to compare it to. So now let's do the low power mode, okay? So now we know it's 870 watts at the wall divided by the 12, we'll put it up to 12.3, okay? So now in this lower power mode, it is a good efficiency gain. It is 70 watts per terahash, okay? So it's not just going in low power mode and it's scaled, it's low power mode, but it's a higher efficiency mode would be better said, right? So we're going from 84 watts per terahash on the KD Lite down to 70 watts per terahash. So it's like a good about 14, 15% gain in efficiency, which is pretty significant. Especially as time goes on when this KA3 comes out, efficiency is going to be everything, right? Because in full power mode, it may not even be profitable anymore. But in low power mode, that 15% might actually make it profitable, okay? So just something to think about, something to consider. Or for those of you who have a very high electrical rate, right? This is also another thing to factor in. Or also for the convenience factor. The problem also with the, the 1,330 watts is that it's right on the border of filling up an entire 15 amp circuit so the big premise with these was that it, you can you know plug it in around the house it's kind of a bigger version of the box right the problem was that it's pretty much at the max 
of what you can do on a 15 amp circuit. So if you had anything else significant on there, you're going to blow that circuit, right? So it does give you a little more benefit there because now you're consuming 170 watts. So you can have, you know, if it's in the living room or in the bedroom, you can have the TV on, lights on, fan on, and not have to worry about blowing the circuit, right? So it does give you more, more flexibility there if you're using it for that purpose. That's not what I'm using it for. Mine's in the garage, so I don't really care. But there's that benefit, right? Depends on your use case. Um, so now let's look at the profitability with the low power mode, right? So now we can compare. So now in this low power mode, I'm yielding anywhere from 3.16 to 3.2. So 3.15 to 3.2 on this lower power mode. But obviously, it's the better efficiency is the king. It's going to yield less, obviously, because it's less tower hash, but the benefit is there. Versus prior to that, it's closer to the 4.2. It's been pretty consistent, actually. This 4.25 has been the average when it's in that full hash rate mode. Right? So it's something to, to consider, something to think about, especially as the, the difficulty and such gets hit harder. You know, that efficiency might be everything. That might be the difference between everything. Right? So now we have that. So now, actually, let's compare it to the new guy, the new kid on the block. Let's compare that efficiency to the Gold Shell, the KD Box 2, right? Because this guy also is coming right off the bat with a low power, low power mode, which is a higher efficiency mode. So now let's compare. We know that the KD Lite is 70 watts of tear hash. Now let's see what this guy does. So we know the power, which is 260 watts, divided by the 3.5. And it's 74 watts of terahash. So that is very interesting that the KD Light is more efficient than this brand new guy. Right? So something to really, really consider, especially because the KD Lights are most likely going to see another price drop here in the near future. Especially once the hash rate gets hit with this KA3 next month, I could see, because right now I think they're still like in the $1,000 price range. But again, keep in mind that a newer version will probably be coming out this spring, right? And even if it doesn't, we know that most likely the prices will continue to drop as the KA3 releases and the profitability numbers go down, right? So it is something to consider, um, but I know everybody's situation is different. I know in my review of the KD Box 2 was for the most part negative, but that's my personal preference of it. For me, I have no use for this. I have 240 volts. My stuff is all in the garage. So for me, it does benefit, but there are pros here, right? Especially number one being the price, the barrier to entry. It's way more easy to digest 300 bucks versus a thousand bucks, right? Another big complaint I had, and this is the news update that I was talking about in the beginning was that they finally now have a Wi-Fi version. So it is in stock. They do have the Wi-Fi version now. That was one of my other complaints with it because that took away one of the cool aspects with the boxes was that you can put them anywhere, right? You can divvy them up. You can have multiples running on different circuits in your house, right? You can have them in a bedroom, in a spare room, in a living room, in the kitchen, and you had the flexibility because of the Wi-Fi aspect. So when they took that away, that was kind of like, oh, you're kind of defeating the purpose or some people's use case with it, right? But now they did add that. It's only 15 bucks more. Realistically, they should have all been Wi-Fi, but I'm assuming, like I kind of mentioned in the other video, was that they were going to be scrambling to get these out. To me, that's most likely what it was. They knew that the KA3 was looming, so they were trying to rush it out, even with this, you know, non-Wi-Fi version. It seems weird that just a couple days later that they have a Wi-Fi version now. But regardless, it is out. So for those of you who are looking, to me, it's way more appealing. Resell will probably be better, especially for only 15 bucks difference. Um, but it all depends on what your use case is, right? Some people don't care about Like for me personally, even if... I were to buy one and I would use it, the Wi-Fi version wouldn't benefit me at all whatsoever. I could care less about it, right? But again, everybody's situation is different and that was one cool aspect, the fact that you could have them pretty much all over the house. They're fairly signed, don't put out much heat. So there's something to think about. So just wanted to give you that quick little update, guys, let you know how my Katie Light's doing and a little update on this. Hopefully you got some value from the video, guys. Um, please comment, like, and subscribe if you're thinking about getting one. You've been mining Kadena. Let me know, right? Throw it in the comments. All right, guys. Thank you for watching again, guys. And I am out.